Maryland Sheep and Wool was last weekend, and I have been waiting for this event all year long. I can't wait to share it with you. Hi, I'm Melanie, and you're watching Yarn Journeys. I'm a knitter, a spinner, and a sometime sewist, and I live in Arlington, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. If you are a returning viewer, well, welcome back. And if you are new to Yarn Journeys, well, I am so glad you have found me. So here's what's up for today's episode. First, we are going to head to Yarn Centric, an indie hand dyer event that was held the Friday before Maryland Sheep and Wool in Frederick, Maryland. And then we're gonna head to the main event. Along the way, I will be sure to share with you the things that came home with me. As always, I'll share an update on how my current projects are going. Finally, you'll want to hang around to the end because I have got a special treat for you. So as we knitting YouTubers like to say, grab a beverage, grab a project, get comfy, and we'll begin. Yarn Centric was held at The Ark, a community arts venue in Frederick, Maryland, which is about an hour's drive northwest of DC and also about an hour's drive west of Baltimore. There was a really nice selection of indie hand dyers there, as well as some artisans who make handcrafts that are sort of yarn and fiber adjacent. I got there just before opening and had to stand in line for a little bit. But before long, it was hopping inside. Lots of people wandering around and checking out all the beautiful yarn that was to be seen. I had a great chat with Lila of Terrapin Fiberworks, who specializes in dyeing plant-based fibers. Check out the shine on this tencel. totally my thing. Forever Yarn had the full gamut of La Bien Aime. Indigo Lane had some lovely jewelry on display. Check out these needle sizing pendants. And these are wraps per inch measures. Lorraine always has a nice selection of shawl pins and stitch markers. These crochet hook pendants are also a lot of fun. And Lorraine's mom came to help her at the show. CMS Supply Co. had some lovely hand dyed. As well as some handmade wool wash and soap and candles. Lux Fibers hails all the way from Mississippi. Just check out the gorgeous tones of their hand dyed yak. This Rambouillet was so pretty and squishy. Dyer Yarn Experiments was at Yarn Centric. This is Rita from Ex Libris Fibers. I found her gothy, deep, 
tones of her yarn to be so beautiful. And if you're into books, her colorway names are really fun. Plies and Hellhounds also had these deep tonal colors in their hand dyed yarns. And I am really glad to see hand dyers step away from speckles and brights to the extent they had in the past. But not to worry, if brights and neons are your thing, there was plenty for you to enjoy at Yarn Centric. Misty from Recycled Yarn spots sweaters in thrift stores that are great candidates for unraveling and reselling beautiful yarn that is ready to be knit up again. Laura from Created For You by Laura had some beautiful tensile blend yarn. And I think she takes the prize for the most inspiring samples. This Don Barker assigned pooling shawl is so pretty. Queen City Yarns came up from Charlotte, North Carolina. Porter Wool Company's jewel tones shone brightly. And it was so awesome to see Rebecca of Woolen Spinning fame demonstrating the perfect lawn draw on her Canadian production wheel. It was nice to meet her mom, Linda, who was also doing the spinning demonstration. Here's what I took home with me. And as we were waiting in line to get in, uh, they handed out these lovely tote bags in which to tote one's purchases. You could get this in either white or yellow, and I went for the natural white version. Um, I was there for the 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, time slot. So they had things uh, broken up in time slots so that it didn't get too crowded. I have been watching Terrapin Fiberworks uh, for some time. Uh, this is a hand dyer of plant-based yarns. And I've uh, seen her at Shenandoah Fiber Festival and at Frederick Fiber Fest. And I've gotten a skein of sock yarn, uh, but I had already decided that I was going to dive in and get a nice big projects worth quantity of yarn. So this is Terrapin Fiberworks Chesapeake DK. And the project I have in mind for it is, well, a t-shirt similar to perhaps the Tolsta tea where I do some kind of yoke or, or fade in these lighter colors. So this one is called uh, Bee Laid Glade in these lovely peach tones. This is 100% organic cotton, if I didn't mention that. Um, and this is called Apple Picking. Um, and I think it's great because it totally reminds me of like what a Honeycrisp apple looks like, which are my favorite apples. And this is three skeins of the shade Sour Cherry. And I just love these tonal dyed colors. So pretty. Um, now I asked for some tips on working with 100% uh, plant uh, fibers. Um, my Tolsta tea, the uh, pattern by Rebecca Clough, the Crayabea, um, 
is made with dapple, which is a blend of wool and cotton. So this will be my first time working with 100% cotton. And the tips she gave me were to use wooden needles so that you're not having to grip the yarn so hard uh, to be able to um, work the stitches without like letting them slide all over the place. And she also said not to, you know, pull or yank on the yarn too hard. So whatever you can do to perhaps knit with a looser tension. Well, I'm, I'm actually a loose knitter by tendency anyway. So uh, we shall see how it goes. Um, and if you have any tips for working with cotton, and other 100% plant fibers, uh, I'd love to have them. So uh, please uh, give me whatever tips you have, and I'm sure others would be interested as well. So loving these beautiful colors from Terrapin Fiberworks. From Gems Lux Fibers, I got their yarn centric special uh, exclusive colorway, I guess that's the, the, the phrase, their, their exclusive colorway for Yarn Centric, which is called a Southern Peach. Um, this is in their Divine Base, uh, which is 70% Merino, 20% Alpaca, and 10% Silk. Uh, this is... So my jam, there's a little bit of speckles in there, but I just love peachy and raspberry, pinky tones all combined together. And <laughs> I couldn't stay away from those tones for another skein. It, this is from Created For You by Laura, and this is her crystal stash base in, uh, it's a 50% superwash merino, 50% eucalyptus tencel. And I was so transfixed by the way this yarn shone under the lights. I was like, oh, that just looks like it's begging to be a summer scarf. Um, and in fact, I just recently watched a lovely yarns uh, video on 25 one skein knot sock um, patterns. And um, I'm feeling inspired to make a lovely summer shawl that is likely to be drapey and shiny um, from this particular skein. Um, as you can probably tell, I have a hard time stepping away from red tones. And I also was super intrigued by the dark moody tones from Ex Libris. And um, I got a set of minis from her in her Ursula base, which is what she calls Yak Sock, which is 70% uh, uh, superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. I was so uh, tickled by <laughs> the, the colors of, the, the names of the colors of uh, these minis. Uh, so uh, the Cabernet one, uh, which I believe is, is this one here, hopefully the color is representing well in the camera. Uh, that one is flowers in the attic. The Movi one, uh, which is, I think, this sort of, this one, um, that one is flowers in the wind. Uh, the leaf green color here is if there be thorns. The golden hue here is seeds of yesterday. And finally, the midnight blue is a garden of shadows. Uh, this takes me back to my uh, 
teenage years. In fact, I think everyone in my tent that summer, we all passed around these books. Um, so anyway, I think these are going to be lots of fun. And I'm thinking I might craft some stripy socks out of these guys. I also got this candle from CMS Supply in the scent cashmere. I'm not very good at describing scents, but there's something, it's like a combination of both woodsy and floral. I think there's some vanilla in here. Anyway, I, I really am enjoying it. I've, I've already been uh, burning it a little. And I purchased another shawl pin. This one here uh, from Indigo Lane. So I got the heart one at Vogue Knitting Live and I got, um, and so this one will be a nice addition. I like to use shawl pins because I hate fussing with my shawls as I'm wearing them. So I like to just put them on, stick a shawl pin in them, and then they stay put. Let's head to the big event. Here we go to Maryland Sheep and Wool 2024. Indeed, it was a rainy weekend for this year's Maryland Sheep and Wool. The mud and the wet was hard to avoid. But that didn't daunt this musician. But it was dry and hopping in the main exhibition hall where there were tons of amazing vendors to check out. Susan's Fiber was back if you were shopping for a new spinning wheel and all sorts of other spinning and fibery tools. Maggie's Fiber had beautiful hand dyed roving and soaps and lip balms and all sorts of sheepy goodness. And here's Maggie. Oh. Ah. Awesome. Farms in upstate New York. Cool. This beautiful BFL Wensleydale roving was tempting. If you were into spindle spinning, Bosworth Spindles had a great selection. And here is Junction Fiber Mills lovely making tracks yarn. I'm a huge fan of Junction Fiber Mills Mill Cast, and it was so awesome to see them at their first time at Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. So of course I had to get selfies with Peggy and Amanda. Point of View Farms resin spindles were so beautifully lit up and displayed. As always, Miss Babs attracted a big crowd. After having spent so much time in New Mexico last fall, I loved this Navajo Dine vendor booth. Isn't this silvery gray Gotland wool just beautiful? Glenn Fittich's farm yarn was just gorgeous. And Hand Dyer Into the World also had some amazing things to check out. I really liked Mitchell Wool Company's yarn.
And they also had some really funny t-shirts and bags for sale. Kim Dye's yarn stains are so pretty and her boucle is to die for. Withers Wool always has a great selection of art yarn. Clemens and Clemens was doing a great business in hand carters, drum carters, spinning tools. But I have my eye on one of Yarn Tech's Swifts. The barns were packed with people checking out the vendors and taking shelter from the rain. One of my favorites, Angel Locks Fiber Works, was back this year with their beautiful roving and bats. And this shawl they had on display is amazing. Tents were packed too, even though sometimes the ground got muddy and wet. This display of yarn from Green Mountain Spinnery is gorgeous. And it's not a fiber festival without Dusty's vintage buttons. Polly Studios had the most hilarious yarn bowls. Local favorite neighborhood fiber company was back with its colorways named after places like Logan Circle and Observatory Circle, famous DC neighborhood. Jill Duarte's Hip Strings was doing a great business because they have some of the best fiber there is to be had. And Avalon Springs Farm was also very busy with their gorgeous many shades of hand-dyed merino. But let's go check out the fleece sale, shall we? For all those hand spinners that are hoping to get a lovely raw fleece to bring home. I must admit I am getting a little bit raw fleece curious. Not quite ready to dive in there, but looking at some of these gorgeous fleeces with their amazing colors and crimp, I think I'm beginning to understand what the fuss is all about. Check out this natural black fleece, wow. But the real stars of the show are the cute sheep, many of whom were getting their final shearing before the show ring. Big, fluffy, valet, black-nosed sheep are some of the cutest animals around. I'm not sure what the breed is, but these guys look like they're gonna go rob a bank, just like last year. The show ring was a great place to sit down and eat lunch. And at the time, this rambunctious Valley Black Nose lamb was being shown off. And I think it won a prize too. So here's what I took home with me from Maryland Sheep and Wool. First, this super fun mug. Uh, this is from Polly Studios, and um, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. Uh, so this was definitely right up my alley. 
Um, it is hot today, so I don't have hot tea or coffee in it. I have got iced tea. Mmm. And it is keeping me cool. Uh, I also got this uh, lovely spindle from Point of View Farm. I was very entranced by their display of spindles and uh, I think this will be fun to play with. I haven't been doing a lot of spindle spinning, but um, this will inspire me to get back into it. I also purchased my first pair of hand cards from Clemis and Clemis. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I am becoming raw fleece curious. Not quite ready to dive in yet into the whole scour it yourself and prep and all that stuff. But uh, I do want to start playing with fiber blends. And while I do have a blending board, um, I, hand cards are a, I believe, a more effective way of making your own thoroughly blended Rolex. So, um, and Jill Duarte, who I took a spinning class with the Wednesday before Marilyn Sheep and Wool, couldn't say, enough good things about how much she likes Clemis and Clemis supplies. So that's what I bought. So when I start playing with these, you will be sure to see what I come up with. And I did purchase a good bit of spinning fiber. So first of all, apologies for the crinkle sounds. I am a Huge fan, as you know, of Simple Hill Farm. Uh, they are a merino farm, a merino sheep farm in the Shenandoah Valley. And I made my Teddy Lutzak, uh, I think it's called the Beyond Petals, uh, pullover um, with their yarn. Uh, but this time she had roving for sale. This roving, all that I bought, I bought uh, four ounces worth in total, um, is from one U called Fig. And this is, well, I'll just read the label. So uh, she describes it as a multicolored chocolate caramel swirl U. The micron count is 17. Point six, and it is, it is so soft, and it is non-super wash treated, and ooh, I wish there was squish a vision. Um, I think this is going to be super fun to spin up into something luscious and beautiful. From Angel Locks Fiberworks. I got some Shetland roving. Um, I got their Shetland gradient bat last year from Maryland Sheep and Wool. In fact, I shared the finished product from that in my last episode. That's, that's what that looks like. And I really loved spinning it. And I thought I should get more of that. So um, this is some lovely Shetland roving. Just look at that chocolate brown color. And I have been on a real Shetland kick lately. I've been watching Shetland on BritBox, um, thinking about Shetland. That's all the hints I'm gonna be giving about that. You're gonna wanna subscribe. From Indie Hand Dyer Into the World, I got two braids of Falkland Top hand dyed. Uh, this is Children of Time, I believe. That's the colorway. I was all in for these moody tonal browns, purples, and blues. Um, 
I'm really eager to see how these colors are going to blend out and spin up. Um, this one, sorry for the crinkles, is also Falkland top. And this is the colorway 221B. Again, this is more cooler tones with purples and grays uh, and plums. But I think these two will be fun together in some kind of combo spin. Fun. And I was super psyched to see Junction Fiber Mill. I am a huge fan of their mill cast. I may have mentioned that before. And so I got one of their little cute drawstring, we will, we will rock you bags. And um, I got three skeins of their Farm Fresh Blue Face Lester, uh, which is about a DK weight. I just am loving this green. I think this is going to be a nice squishy winter scarf. We'll see. Um, anyway, so much fun. Um, there was so much beautiful things there at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I was tempted to, to buy a lot more, but you know, one has to pace oneself. <laughs> because I've got some fun things coming up. By the way, if you are enjoying this content, please be sure to give this video a like and hit that thumbs up. Uh, that will help people just like yourself find the video and the channel. Thank you so much. And as I kind of hinted at earlier, I have some great and exciting yarn journeys planned for the rest of the year. So if you haven't already done so, you'll want to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. So it's been a little while. So I have some finished objects to share. First up are my finished DRK everyday socks patterned by Andrea Mowry, of course, that I knit in the sock yarn I bought in Japan. Specifically, this is Hamanaka Kopoker. I think that's what it is. I bought it at Ito Tobacco in Kyoto. And I just think that the way the colors pooled and striped is just crazy fun. Uh, I am sure that when I wear them, every time I look down at my feet, I will have a little smile on my face. In fact, these might be good to wear with sandals if I dare, because uh, they're kind of too cute to be hidden in shoes. Anyway, um, finished pair of socks. But the big deal is that I finished my Stephen West glittering snowscape shawl. This thing is so huge. Uh, it did take me a while to work through that border, but it is done and I could not be more thrilled. Will I do another big Stephen West shawl again? Probably not, but uh, I am really pleased with how this one came out. It's so drapey. Okay, now I'm hot. Whew. Anyway, um, the yarn is the undercover otter that I purchased on site at Stephen and Penelope in Amsterdam. And, um, you know, I couldn't be more thrilled with how all this lace turned out. Now, I did end up playing yarn chicken because I didn't do 
the striping of the eyelet rose in the border. Let me see. Um, but I don't really think it shows very much, so I had to finish the border using the color from the previous band of lace. But, you know, I don't think anyone's going to notice. Um, anyway, yay, it is done. On to works in, oh, one more finished object. Uh, I spun up the Cormo and Valet Black Nose Bat that I bought at Vogue Knitting from a Wing and a Prayer farm. And um, this I did long draw on my trusty ladybug, which is right here. Uh, I am so pleased with uh, the squishiness of this yarn. It is Cormo, I think. Anything with Cormo is just so squishy. And I know that these red tones will fit right in with a lot of my other yarn. So not sure what I'm going to do with it just yet, but the squishy spinning fun continues. And I continue to be so happy that I started spinning. It is, it really just gives me a lot of satisfaction and joy. So if you haven't picked up the spinning bug and you're not, and you think you might want to dive in, highly recommend. Works in progress. Okay. I recast on my Melanie Berg Lacy T. Uh, this is um, a study in pink. Well, in, in my case, it's a study in mint green. This yarn is the Flax Fingering from Camellia Fiber Co., which is a blend of linen, alpaca, and silk. And um, it's really coming out nice. So I just, you know, I, as, as you may know from my previous episode, I made some critical mistakes in getting the yoke started. So I just ripped it all back and started over. Um, this is taking me a bit of time to get through. I was so happy when I finally was able to uh, split for the sleeves and only be working on the body. Um, but this is knit on number two needles. So lots of stitches on small needles in stockinette. Um, so I will be uh, trying to work through this quickly, yet also carefully, because I don't want to be ripping back on this sweater again. Um, hopefully I'll be making a lot of progress soon. And here is the progress I've made on my Inclinations shawl, another pattern by Andrea Mowry, of course, uh, that I knit with my own hand spun. Uh, so uh, most of the fiber is a mohair alpaca wool blend with a little bit of sparkle in it. Um, this bottom triangular portion, this is a, um, the, the blue color is uh, from Avalon Springs Farm Roving and the multicolor stripes. Uh, that is some hedgehog fibers, blue hair, blue hair, blue faced Lester and mohair blend. Um, I have been working in now into the peaches and gold colors. Those are all made with fiber from Avalon Springs Farm. Oh, I think I'm showing you the back. Um, this is the front. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, this is half fisherman's rib. Sorry about the banging of the needles on the table. Um, this is super, super, super squishy. This is going to be super warm and be, I'm going to make it 
pretty darn big. I think this is going to be a proper schlanket, as they say. So lots more of this to come. This is great TV knitting, I have to say. So stay tuned. So those are all my project updates. Now for the treat. Springtime is not only fiber festival season, it is also lambing season. And if you're like me, there are a few things that can put a smile on your face quicker than cute newborn lambs. Now, if you wanna go see them in person and you live in the close-in suburbs of a major metropolitan area like I do, then that is going to probably involve, first of all, you know, seeing what farms allow people to visit during lambing season, but also some drives out into the country. Well, as it turns out, there were newborn lambs to be seen at George Washington's Mount Vernon estate, which is less than a half hour's drive from here in Alexandria, Virginia. And anyone can go see them so long as you pay the, well, the hefty admissions fee into Mount Vernon, $28. But anyway, it was worth it because the lambs there are so stinking cute. They are Hog Island sheep lambs. Now, Hog Island sheep are a very endangered breed. They are descendants of uh, a flock of sheep that was abandoned on Hog Island off the coast of Virginia in the 1930s. There was a big hurricane and all the farmers and inhabitants evacuated, uh, leaving their livestock behind. And the um, island was never inhabited again. Nobody went back. Fast forward into the 1970s, and somehow there was a healthy flock of sheep uh, still surviving. And many of the historical properties along the Mid-Atlantic uh, decided that they would bring some of these Hog Island sheep to be part of their historical agricultural displays and that they would help uh, keep this breed of sheep going because as it turns out they are probably most similar to the sheep that were in the area during the 18th century colonial period. So they have them at Mount Vernon, which is, if you're not aware, um, George Washington's estate. If you haven't visited Mount Vernon, I do highly recommend it. It is a beautiful place to, to see on a nice spring or summer day. Uh, they do a great job there, at least in my opinion, of giving historical and social context to uh, you know, how George Washington's Mount Vernon estate was run. And you get to see some sheep and these really cute lambs. So lambs, take it away.